Katie Hill Staffer Allegations Affair. Katie Hill Staffer, Katie Hill Allegations. Katie Hill Affair. I said that for SJ, for uh, SEO reasons. Although this is about SJWism directly, although probably more directly than she's actually. Katie Hill is the indirect story. This story is about Katie Hill. She's a freshman Democrat who has embraced in various degrees SJWism and uh, maybe possibly, maybe possibly she was caught doing things that uh, contradict her her SJW values, kind of like finding the Republican congressman who's constantly railing against the gays and you find out that he's been going to bathhouses and... Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. So this is Katie Hill. This is how Google decided to present Katie Hill. We have Fox News video, CBS, MSN, MSN, CBS, MSN, 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 MSN. Boy, a lot of MSNs. Jeez, wonder what that is all about. Why does Google feature MSN? They're like compete with Microsoft. That's interesting. So then there's, uh, well, here's uh, the, the, the headlines. Uh, freshman Democrat, Katie Hill denies allegations, denies affair with staffer, denies allegations she had a relationship, fights back amid claims she was involved in. Freshman Dem, Katie Hill denies improper relations. Blah, 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 blah. Now, before I go on, this is the story I think that's going on. First off. Fascism. Let's 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 look at a, a, a definition of fascism. Fascism is a form of far right authoritarian ultranationalism. I want to highlight ultranationalism. Ultranationalism is an extreme nationalism that promotes the interest of one state or people above all others, or simply extreme devotion to one's nation. Kind of like if you say, "Listen, the whites have had their time, and now it's time for the pox to have theirs." So we need to do what we can to take the power from the whites and give it to the pox. Kind of like that. That kind of ultranationalism. Characterized by dictatorial power, forcible suppression of opposition, and strong regimentation of society and of the economy, which came to prominence in early 20th century Europe. This is not true. It came to prominence in early 20th century Europe. Fascism got its name in early 20th century Europe, but fascism in practice has existed since humans have been using coercive enterprise governance as a model to work together. So I, want, I want you to keep that in mind, and I want to highlight this right here. Where's that? There. I want to post it with it. Because we're not at dictatorial power yet. We're not there yet. Believe you me, this is where the fascists all want to end you in. And there's multiple paths to get there. There's soft power. There's hard power. There's uh, nudging and there's smashing. But I want to highlight forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and the economy. I want you to remember that as we go forward. Now, this woman, Katie Hill, she is, let's get a picture of you here, Katie. Get this pictures back up here. She is a part of the DNC, of DNC, which is a fascist organization. A, I'm going to call it a terrorist organization, subjectively, not legally. I'm not legally calling it a terrorist organization because I don't think legally it fits that definition. But by my definition. Uh, entities that use a uh, form of uh, terrorism called stochastic terrorism. Stochat uh, sorry. Let's, let's get this. Let's get this. Uh, Stokey. Oh, my gosh. I can't even. Stochastic. Here we go. Hold on. Let's, let's go with stochastic terrorism. Let's just see this stochastic terrorism. The public demonization of a person or group resulting in the incitement of a violent act, which is statistically probable, but whose specifics cannot be predicted. Remember that. This is what these people do every day. 
Now, I'm not saying that the Dems are alone in stochastic terrorism, because believe you me, they're not. But I'm talking about the Dems today. The Democratic National Committee is accusing Facebook of allowing President Trump to mislead the American people without facing any consequences. Look, look at that. Mislead the American people without facing any consequences. Okay? So what she's saying is Facebook should not be allowing Donald Trump to post on Facebook, nor should she be that should they be carrying their ads of uh, Donald Trump and the people who support Donald Trump. Just just across the board. DNC CEO Simananda made the allegation in a Tuesday interview with CNN. CNN is uh that is one of the most offensive stochastic terrorists out there to get today. CNN, one of the most violent organizations in the world. I mean, right up there with ISIS. They don't chop off your heads. They chop off your bank accounts and watch you die slowly. That's what they do. It's actually, in a way, it's actually more cruel than ISIS. At least with ISIS, you just die immediately. With them, they give you five, ten years to watch your life slowly ebb away to nothing. That's, that's crueler. Just, just kill us already. Just a week after the tech giant announced that it would not remove posts or advertisements from politicians if they happened to violate the company's community rules. Because if they did that, since the stochastic terrorists of the left, which are not left, by the way, you're all on the right. America is totally right wing across the board. Uh, the uh, terrorist on the, the stochastic terrorist on the left, they, uh, they, you know, this this right here, man, this advertisements, what we have to do here. Forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy. And by the way, that economy, that is that is that is where that is where neoliberalism is born. Neoliberalism is they get their they get their inspiration from Hitler and Mussolini. Now, maybe, maybe not. If they've reached back far enough, if they go into the origins, they would go to China. They would go to uh, one thousand BC to zero AD. Those thousand years. That's when China developed all of the complex thoughts of fascism that <coughs> the West just discovered in the 20th century. Well, I mean, they've, they've like I said, fascism in, has existed <coughs> since we've been doing course of enterprise governance. But, well, the Chinese are just really good at it. Let me go here. Acts of hate touch every community and threaten to undermine the most basic tenets of our democracy. This person will have you believe that the United States of America is in a crisis. This, by the way, this is a leadership conference on civil and human rights. This is where this nander came from. This is where Cena came from, the leadership conference on civil and human rights. Human rights is a dog whistle for red fascism. Human rights means this. Forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy. This is what they're using to get the, well, I won't say get. I think the billionaires are the ones driving it. But the, the narrative that they're pushing out to give the very billionaires cover for their fascistic uh, actions in the marketplace, especially billionaires that control entities like YouTube, Facebook, Washington Post, CNN, our colleges and universities, all just filled with red fascism through and through. Listen to that stochastic terroristic thing. You're 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 setting the the people up. You're 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 all of these people, especially if you're not white. You're you're trying to convince them. This is the leadership conference on civil and human rights trying to convince non-white people that white people are fundamentally trying to kill them. What the heck do you think you're doing? to these people's minds with this kind of sick perversion and hate is on the rise yes it is large part thanks to you i mean donald trump don't get me wrong he's a stochastic terrorist i'm not getting him off the hook i'm not talking about him right now but and hate is on the rise yes it is new research and that's usually what happens when when fascism rises uh fascism gets combated with fascism and that's what's going on New research found that hate crimes reached their highest numbers in a decade after increasing for four straight years. Now, what's really interesting about this, where's the frickin' link? What research? You don't even cite who it's from. You just put this out there. Oh, I totally believe you. Totally believe you. 
But the data understates the true violence against a diverse set of communities impacted directly by hate. In other words, they're already saying, listen, new research is found that crimes reached. It's worse than it's ever been. Well, in 10 years, it's just really, really bad. But it's even worse. Not based on anything other than what? Nearly 90% of the nation's law enforcement agencies do not submit hate crimes to the FBI. Hate crimes. Yeah, like what you're committing here. This is a hate crime because you are hating on white people in a major, major way. You are spreading the narrative that somehow there's tons and tons of white people that are going after blacks, and that's not true. That is a lie. To take on this, look at that, problematic. Screw your problematics. The leadership the, to take on this problematic gap in data, Leadership Conference Education Fund launched Communities Against Hate in partnership with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law and a diverse array of organizations to document stories. Oh my gosh. This is this is this is a stochastic terroristic organization that is that is seeking to destroy they're not actually seeking to destroy white people, they're seeking to destroy rule of law, due process. They don't really, white people are really not the target. That's one thing for you to understand. White people are not the target. It's just the vehicles of power in place, the way that they are, the 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 power within the American state, you know, we're 60% white, we're 80% Christian, we're 95% heterosexual, we are, yeah, those things alone. And those things alone define, to some degree, America. Not, not, not so much the, the, the white people thing, but, uh, well, yeah, to a certain degree, the white people thing. Yeah, white people are a pretty part of, important part of America. If you take a m white people out of America, you don't have America. I, I want to say, if you take black people out of America, you don't have America either. See, America... Fundamentally, I mean, if you if if I were to say what are the, what are the uh, essential race groups of America, all of them, we have so many human beings throughout American history that have contributed significantly to what America actually is. We have Chinese people, we have black people, we have Mexican people. We are all like the the thing about America is that it must be the, well, I won't say must be, but I prefer it must be the one, at least the one place in the world where a human being can go and not be defined by how they look or who they fuck. That's America. We are the only ones who have an opportunity for that right now in this land. Nowhere else in the world does any other nation state remotely approach the ideational standards of America. Now, I am not saying that America lives up to these ideational standards, and ideational standards in and of themselves don't protect you against a police officer who decides, I'm just going to do what I want. I'm just saying those ideational standards, they're like, I guess you could say uh, uh, all nation states will oppress their people. They will oppress their people to the degree to which, one, they believe they have the ability to do so, and two, uh, the, the degree to which they, they believe that oppression may actually start to diminish returns. So if they think that too much oppression will diminish the real returns that they get, not so much oppression. So in America, we have this ideational power called the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, I mean, fundamentally, you say the Bill of Rights, we don't even know all the Bill of Rights. Fundamentally, I believe the most important ones that we always talk about, and I think for good reasons, the first, second, and fourth, and fifth. So we're talking about fundamental things that have to do with the, the choices that hu human beings can make in their lives. The ability to defend yourself. The ability to choose to go down whatever path you want to go down as long as you're not directly harming others. This is what underlies America uh, in, in its essence. This is what separates it from the rest of the world. Ideational separation. In terms of execution, uh, we got a lot of problems. <laughs> so this is, this is our reality. This is what these folks want to end. They're using fighting hate and bias in the same way that Adolf Hitler 
said that he was fighting. He was fighting. He was fighting degeneracy. He was fighting corruption. He was fighting perversion. These are the things were his words. Not uh, th this is this is these are the he's fighting. He's identifying things that we all kind of recognize as we don't want that. We don't really want degeneracy. Of course, define degeneracy. Not everybody's degeneracy is the same, but that's another matter. But still, an ideational appeal to limiting your ability to choose to live the life of your own choosing and increasing the ability of a small number of people who have the power to call on government guns to march at their behest, to increase their power. It's a it's a it's a point zero 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 one percent white male billionaire movement that fundamentally will benefit the white billionaire males. That's that's the Democrat Party. That's this leadership conference on civil and human rights sponsored. I, I don't know, but I'm sure that they get most of their money from from billionaires in one way, shape or form. I'd be willing to bet that. It comes, there's about 15 or 20 human beings in America that are the fundamental decision makers as far as what special interest groups get funded and the type of news stories and positions that news outlets will take. A wave of hate broke over the U.S. following the 2016 elections, affecting peoples from all walks of life across the country. Nope, not true, not true at all. Uh, you had some basically in the liberal cities, in the quote unquote liberal, in the red fascist cities, you had people that uh, used those places as the battlegrounds and they pulled in the most radical from all the fascist movements, whether they're blue or red fascists. And they uh, and they fought in the streets while 99 plus percent of America won about its daily business. And still is. And our only reason for being afraid is because you people keep spreading this stochastic terrorism out there. You are literally trying. The Southern Poverty Law, the Southern Poverty Law Center, is a part of this group. They're 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 absolute terrorists. They have literally targeted individuals and smeared them, and they've actually been sued and had to pay because they've targeted individuals with racism and bigotry in an attempt to destroy dissent. To destroy the opposition. In other words, the Southern Poverty Law Center is like Hitler and like Mussolini. They're using forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy. And don't you kid yourselves in believing for a second that we're talking about free market decisions. We're talking about a market that is controlled by 15 or 20 at most billionaires. And these are the people that decide the morality codes that their businesses are going to enforce on their customers. And if we don't like it and we go out and we try to create an alternative to them, then they will use the government to shut us down like they did with Patreon. And when, uh, what is it, uh, that subscriber star or whatever, that, that star thing that, that, that came as an alternative to Patreon and then MasterCard moved against, uh, against them. Now, you go ahead and try and start a, a, a banking industry without a million dollars at least you need at least a million dollars just to pay for the applications to get the licensing just that alone just a million dollars at least a million dollars alone just to start an alternative the bar is is pretty high and it's that high on purpose and it's that high to prevent dissent this is soft tyranny this is fascism so we move on to katie who is katie katie hill why am i covering all this stuff about fascism and soft fascism and what the dnc is i want i'm gonna let you see the katie hill shows to me that the the soft fat the, the red fascists they're not all they got problems they got some issues they're not all one group and they are not all unified and she is a case in point i believe to show this katie hill she was just elected this last election cycle she's a democrat and she beat a republican and she ran on a platform that she's going to be the moderate Democrat. The wasn't going to give Nancy Pelosi uh, a rubber stamp. And she says, Katie Hill is the congresswoman for California's 20, 25th congressional district serving the Antelope, well, whatever, 
The daughter of a registered nurse and police officer, Katie most recently worked as executive director of PATH, People Assisting the Homeless, largest homeless services organization in California. And this is PATH. The group started by distributing food and clothing to people living on the streets. As homelessness continues to grow nationwide, research revealed that Housing First, a best practice model that first connects people to permanent housing and then focuses on stabilization through voluntary supported services, proved more effective. Now, over 30 years later, we have more than 25 locations through California. Prove, provide service in more than 140, okay, whatever. Okay, so, I mean, you read this, and uh, this is good. Whatever this is, like, if this is all it is on the surface, and I did just a little bit of digging, I haven't found anything that's obvious, but uh, this is good. This is what she comes from. And to me, this is, this where she comes from, this demands nuance, and, and these stories demand nuance, because I'm calling people red fascists and blue fascists. I don't want you to believe for a second that I believe people who are red fascists, blue fascists, whether they know that they are or not, that they're subhuman, that they're evil. They're not on the main. There's very few people I would say that are actually evil. Most people are just idiots, and she's just an idiot, I believe. I don't believe that she is a wicked, evil demagogue so much as she is an idiot. And, and and not in all of her life, I'm sure. I mean, obviously, she she's the one who did this. She What she did here is excellent. She should be lauded. She's demonstrated intelligence and quality, leadership, all the great things that you'd want in people that were making decisions for you. I don't want anybody making decisions for you, but you do, so be it as it may. So... When I say she's an idiot, I only mean in, in this area in her life. This, the way that she sees the world politically is badly, badly misinformed, and it's based on histrionics and lies. And it's, it's a vehicle of power, though, that allows her to feel good. And I won't speculate as to why that is. I got my own speculations, but this is who she is. Now, this is also who she is. As a lifelong gun owner, I am ready to be a sensible voice. Oh, my gosh. There is nothing sensible about what you're about ready to say other than you are a fascist. And this is what fascists do. In the debate around gun violence, gun violence is not a thing. There is violence that is perpetuated in which individuals use guns. There is no such thing as gun violence. And gun violence as an epidemic is not a thing. There is no epidemic of gun violence. There's no epidemic of violence. There's violence, but no epidemic. This is all histrionics. This is all scare tactics. This is stochastic terrorism is what it is. This is stigmatizing gun owners as being violent, as being killers. The implication is the only re well, you'll see. I believe that respecting the Second Amendment and advocating for gun safety measures are not mutually exclusive. Uh, that's some of Orwellian doublespeak there, especially when you see what she's going to propose. The Second Amendment, we have a right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is there as a final check on you, you fascist. It's a final check on fascism. It's a final check on this. When human beings get in power and they have the government guns, they have the monopoly of violence, which they do across the world like nowhere else. Well, actually, they, across the world, it's it, in America, the monopoly on violence is the least for the government than it is anywhere else. And she wants to take that away. She wants to remove that protection of the poor's from the billionaires. She's on the side of the billionaires, whether she knows it or not. I suspect she does, but I don't know. I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. Again, largely because of this, 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 uh, this thing right here. Because this group, again, as far as I can see, I might find something horrible about them, but as far as I can see, there's a good thing she's doing here. I, I support this on, it, on its surface, which, by the way, just fascists aren't always wrong. So, her solution which is why i am proud to have the distinction as a gun sense candidate from mom's demand action mom's demand action that regularly lies and obfuscates and commits stochastic terrorism on a daily basis and i could go into that but i don't have time 
I'm already taking too long. Like we already have in California. So she supports gun laws. With California's total red fascism, like out the giggy fascism, they might as well be yelling out Heil Alexandria Ocas Cortez, because she's their Hitler, by the way. But, well, more on that. More on why this story is interesting to me. I support a federal ban on assault weapons, you liar. You are not a gun owner. Maybe you own a, tw- a pink 22 that you've never fired, because you're not a gun owner if you're ever, ever using that phrase. Assault weapons, because you know it's a bull crap phrase. All weapons are assault weapons. They're designed to assault. That's what they're there for. High capacity magazines and bump stocks. You idiot. Bump stocks. Yeah, I, I can create a bump stock with my finger. I can create a bump stock with a rubber band, with a board, with a belt loop. There's so many ways for people to bump stock their, their, their semi-automatic rifles. And even their semi-automatic pistols. I've seen, I don't know how many, I've seen all the videos with the Glocks and uh, people who can bump stock Glocks. Bump stocks are horrendous for self-defense. They're toys. You take it to the range and you rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat and feel good. Like, yeah, noise, power, people love it. But it's not practical. As well as increasing waiting periods, raising the minimum age to purchase for all weapons, yeah, she wants to raise it to, to 21 years old. She's not going to change the law that says that 18-year-olds can, uh, you know, selective service can draft 18-year-olds, and you can go serve the military and shoot guns. But somehow 18-year-olds, they can die for our country, but they can't own guns. That's just like the, you know, if, if, if you're what at whatever age they say you can die for your country, that's the age that you get the same rights as everyone else. Voting rights, gun rights drinking rights whatever rights adults have that 18 year olds don't have they they have those rights unless you're going to change the 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 year that you can go ahead and and uh kill yourself or get killed or kill these measures can have a significant impacting on gun violence not a single impact will any of these things have other than making it easier for the sjw's to incorporate into American jurisprudence the new SJW jurisprudence. The new SJW jurisprudence that convicts you for being in the wrong tribe, for convicts you to to having an unfair balance of power based upon the historical context of your relationship, uh, your your tribe's relationship to the tribe, the, the relationship of the the to to the uh, to the one you're opposing, the one you're in conflict with, their tribe's relationships. That's that's who you are, and that's what you're opera, uh, advocating for. What you're literally advocating for is that individuals be disarmed, that they have no effective means to check government power. I'm not saying that individuals with AR-15s can conquer a, a highly advanced military, but uh, even 30 million Americans spread throughout the land with AR-15s can you know, if the government goes full on, just let's just totally abandon this social contract, whatever, you know, so-called social contract. Uh, and, and let's just let's just ignore the Bill of Rights. Let's just ignore due process, rule of law. 30 million Americans with guns pretty much going to end your ability to have a stable land. You're done. Your competition around you, the Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, the Japanese, all of them, all competitors. They're going to eat your lunch because within you are going to be in turmoil because I'm telling you, there's no way in heck that people like me, I don't mean white people, I mean people like me, non-fascists, are going to just lie down and die for you. We're not going to. Katie Hill will literally have to murder me before I hand over my AR-15. I mean, if I had one. Of course, nobody has AR-15s anymore. We all lost them. But if I did... I would never hand them over to Katie Hill. I would rather shoot Katie Hill in the face than hand over my AR-15. And I think that you are going to have to come to realize that little girl, little privileged girl. And believe you me, she's a U.S. representative. As soon as she became a U.S. representative, she became one of the privileged elites. Her meal ticket was written. She now has a salary for life, never has to work again. And she now has health care for life, never a single worry again. She is now immune from the consequences of her own actions. She is a protected class. She is the privileged, the real privileged class. 
the real privileged class is the billionaires and their closest allies, which includes the political class. And uh, here she is, uh, Katie Hill, and uh, she makes some statements here that I find to be rather interesting, rather telling about the, the nature of her fascism. She says here in this uh, little excerpt here, where is it? Where is Katie's little thing? Here we go. Freshman Democrat Representative Katie Hill, who flipped a red seat. Oh, okay, no, that's uh, that's not it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to play this for you. See if I have it here. C-SPAN. Oh, gosh, and we're playing an ad. Cable okay, it's just a CNN ad. Okay, I can live with that. C-SPAN. There we go. To oppose the motion to recommit with Gen all of my heart. The gentlewoman is recognized. I can't believe that we're standing here and having a man tell me what kind of protections I need. In there you go. There you go. There you go. Demonization of an individual based upon their identity in a, in a group. She's literally stochastic terrorism there against males, against maleness. Somehow a man cannot object to transgenders being allowed to participate in women's sports because he's a male. Males can't participate in that conversation. This is a conversation that affects all of society. The standards that are set, are set affect all individuals in society and this woman wants the man to shut up. So that's just who she is. I want you to, to, to what I want to clearly show is that this woman whatever degree of red fascist she is she is totally on board with the fundamental assumptions of red fascism that you can demonize whole groups of people. And your argument that you have with people isn't based on the sound. You, you can't even talk about this debate. You can't even discuss the, the ramifications of allowing transgenders to participate in women's sports if you're a male. You know what that is? Forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy. That is what she's advocating for. So I'm going to make it clear that this so-called moderate is an extreme right-wing fascist. She's a right-winger, a hardcore right-winger. Oh, I want you to keep that in mind as I go forward here. And Katie, here we go. This is where we get a problem. Hill sees herself as a link between an experienced Democratic leadership team whose decades in Congress can distance them from the grassroots and the party's fervent younger generations. She also hopes to bridge divides between the most liberal end of her party, the likes of Alexandria Ocas-Cortez of New York and Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, for example, and moderate freshmen in swing districts. Remember, she considers herself a moderate freshman. She's not moderate. There's nothing moderate about this woman. She is a right-wing nutjob. By every definition, she is a fascist, a right-wing fascist. If you're talking about a tank of gas, I'm right there at three-quarters of it. So she's three-quarters uh, right-wing fascist. She said of her place in the conservative liberal spectrum. No, no, no. You're just talking about the fascist fascist. This is blue fascism, uh, conservative blue fascism, and liberal red fascism. Now, I want to say... All you conservatives listening out there and all you liberals listening out there, all you progressives, all you Democrats, all you Republicans, all you GOPers, most Americans are fundamentally not fascist, I believe. I hope. I think I'm right. They may be going along with some degrees of fascism and not really believing that they are, but mostly the degree to which they are, they're doing so because they feel like they have to. They're not like ideationally committed to fascism. They kind of believe if they don't that the other side is going to murder them in their sleep. And honestly, you don't want either one of these sites to get power, to get full power in America, because there will be murders. And uh, the thing is, it, it won't matter. If you're a POC and the red fascists take charge, unless you're willing to go fully on board with their, with their ever-expanding definitions of the right human being to be, you're going to find yourself in the concentration camps right beside us whiteies. You know, whiteies and POCs are going to be in the same... Uh, concentration camps together and you're going to find that like weirdly it's still going to be overwhelmingly white on the outside it'll be filled with these so-called white allies that's what she is 
And actually, of all the 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 SJWs out there, the SJWs that you should fear the most are the white ones. They are much more aggressive, much more willing to use the government to uh, advance the the red fascism. So. This is interesting here as we get to, I want to highlight this, where she is talking about, mm, where is it? Mm. Well, she faced in her primary, she faced a challenge from the Justice Democrats, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They did not want her because she's not radical enough. She's not far right enough for these far righters. She won the primary and then narrowly beat the Republican. I think narrowly. I, I could be wrong on that. But she is a red fascist who's not red fascist enough. Freshman Democrat Representative Katie Hill, who flipped a red seat in Southern California, survived a tough primary in which Justice Democrats backed one of her competitors. And Hill says it's a dangerous strategy. Uh, saying of the group's decision to single out incumbents. Right now, I think we should be focused on entirely keeping the people who just got elected, of course, because she's one of them, keeping our majority, winning the Senate, and getting Trump out of the White House. Justice Democrats' strength lies in its... Well, they they go on to talk about the Justice Democrats and, and their... Uh, and the monies, all the monies that the Justice Democrats have. I'm going to do a video about the Justice Democrats. And I just want to... I just want to point out something here, just to, just to get you thinking here. Political party of Erdogan. Let's just enter that. Political party of Erdogan. Look at that! You see what that is? Justice and Development Party. Justice. Yeah, justice. 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 That's the key. That's what they use. They love that word, justice. And they love to define what justice is. It's it's not American justice. It's it's fascist justice. It's it's making sure that we are morally correct. This is the justice. This is Erdogan's justice. You know, is Erdogan left or right? Erdogan is right. Erdogan is a right winger. He is a far right winger. Erdogan is closer to the Nazis even than the Democrats are. And the Democrats are real close. But Erdogan, they actually hate the Jews. So they're much more aligned with the Nazis, and they have a much more traditional nationalism, ultra-nationalism, than the, uh, the SJWs do. They have the Turks. They're very Turk nationalist. And they're the Justice and Development Party. That's the name. That's the name, the Justice and Development Party. And you know who the, you know who started the Justice Democrats? Justice Democrats. Chink. You know who Chink is? You know, Cenk is Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk and Cenk Uyghur. Cenk Uyghur. You know, it's interesting about uh, Cenk Uyghur, even though he's been out of, ousted, ousted out of its own party. Cenk is Turkish. As a matter of fact, he calls himself the Young Turks. You want to know what Young Turks are? There you go. You see that? Young Turks, Armenian Genocide. Very, 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 very right-wing organization. And they call themselves the Young Turks, and that's okay. It's like, let's just call ourselves the Nazis and say, no, 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 not those Nazis. Yeah. That's what, that's who funded Alexander Orcates. Now, these Nazis or red fascists aren't the same red fascists as Katie. Katie comes more from the American-centered fascism and the Young Turks come from more the un-American, non-American uh, fascism. Katie still believes, I would, I would wager she still believes the United States of America, Americanism, patriotism to some degrees, that all those things are still good to sustain. And she probably believes a little bit more in rule of law and due process. These guys, that's a whole other level. These guys are, are flat-out Nazis. Nazis. This is where Alexandra Ocas Cortez comes from. She comes from this group. She comes from the Young Turks. She's the the foreign government version of SJWism in America. 
All of this is about this story here. The first of the 2020 primary polls, well, I don't care about that. And the launch of many 20 campaigns will follow. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this, this is Red State. And I want to highlight this because this is important, I think, to the story. Red State, especially early on with uh, Eric Erickson, who's no longer with Red State. He's gone off and done something new. I forget what it's called. Uh, but Eric Erickson early on was a Never Trumper, and Red State was early on in the, in the Never Trump camp. And now they do have people that write for them that are pro-Trump, but fundamentally most conservatives that kind of recognize Red State as being kind of the home for the Never Trumpers. So I want you to remember that. Red State is the one that that outed this girl for being allegedly the inconsistent, well, not inconsistent, inconsistent as far as her, her moral preaching on the outside and how she conducts herself inside. She conducts herself like a fascist on the inside, if this is to be believed, what they allege. Photographs and text messages obtained by Red State show that Representative Hill was involved in a long-term sexual relationship with a female campaign staffer. The woman, whose name is not being released, was hired by the Hill by Hill in late 2017 and quickly became involved in a throuple relationship with Hill and her estranged husband, Kenny Heslip. Now on this, this uh, why, why is Red State doing this? Why would Red State target this woman? See, to me, to me, this woman is being targeted. Not, not because she's a fascist she's not being targeted by conservatives conservatives are not trying to take this woman out red fascists are and i believe that red state fittingly named right now because who knows i think red state is uh is targeting her because because she's not a red fascist like a, a a militant red fascist i mean what she's proposing will end up with militant red fascism no matter what, but but I don't think she believes that. She believes that you can have, uh, you know, kinder, gentler fascism. She doesn't believe she's actually a fascist. She thinks she's fighting fascism. All of them do. So why? Why is Red State targeting this woman? Now, the, the gist of this is that she had, a, you know, a threesome with a staffer, and her husband, now the staffer, there is a rule in the house that says that you cannot have relationships with staff. However, she was a staffer that was part of her campaign, not part of the house. So it doesn't really look like she's actually violated any any rules. So I don't think that there's an issue. But you can see, like, how she deals with people, allegedly. Allegedly. Although she's never denied these things. She hasn't denied the text messages that have been displayed. Uh, yes, I'd like to talk sometime, but only if you want to. I still care about you. Well, I still care about you, but I think I need a little more time to move on before we can be friends. I think you would understand if I asked for about one to two more months because it's too fresh. Like, please understand. It's not because I hate you. It's just because it hurts too much to think about you at this time. Act after that time, I would be happy to try to reconnect as friends. Please respond to this message with your thoughts, though, just for my sanity. So this is... Uh, the, the, the staffer, as these text messages show, was distraught and trying to figure out how to move on with her life. In the message, Hill references their continuing work relationship and that she wants it to be as okay as possible. Oh my God, of course, I didn't mean anything soon. I just mean, like, we're going to see each other, e each other for, I don't know, I assume, and I want to be as okay as possible. And I do want to know about your blank and help look things over, et cetera, if you want me to. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. I was pretty excited when you had me offered to blank, when you had offered to blank for me. Definitely. The staffers ask if the political risk led Rep Hill to end the relationship. Was it the political risk? No. I mean, I guess maybe partially. Honestly, though, it's that I want to be alone. I don't want to be accountable to anyone else. I want to be entirely focused on this work that I think is so important. And that's not fair as any, to anyone as a partner. Yeah, I guess I had a different vision, I guess, of you, be, of you busy legislating the country, of me busy learning to be a, a whatever, and just being happy together when there was time. Don't worry, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just telling you where I was. To which Hill replied, no, I mean, I guess maybe, okay, whatever. According to the text message received after Hill left 
the thruple, Haslip was told by numerous sources that Hill had been involved in a sexual relationship for a year with her then finance director, now legislative director, Graham Kelly. And a post on his now deleted Facebook account, Haslip posted a screenshot of a screenshot of a text message between himself and a friend of the couple in which the friend admits that he now knows about the Hill Kelly affair. Okay, so this is secondary information. Okay, you know, and my point here, by the way, is not whether these allegations are true. I am much more interested in the attack in general and where it came from. It came from Red State, a never Trump outlet on the main. And it targeted someone who is actually not very well liked and appreciated by the squad. She is not a militant red fascist. She's a soft red fascist. She's a nudger, is what I believe. She's a nudger. There's nudgers and smashers. She's in the nudge crowd. AOC and her ilk, they're in the smash crowd. They believe in smashing the whole thing. They believe in the, the Robespierre model. Robespierre, the leader of the French Revolution, had this, you know, the 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 the, the new man, the natural man, that uh, they were going to recreate humanity by redesigning all of the infrastructures around them, all of the institutions. They were going to get rid of Christianity. They outlawed Christianity. They outlawed that. The, they changed the days of the week from seven days to was it eight days or I can't remember. They 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 created a whole new calendar to totally. This is what the militant red fascists are talking about. They're talking about, through force, fundamentally changing all of our institutions so that they can create the new man. The, well, the new person, I guess they would say, the new person. So, there you have it. This is, I believe, I don't really care about whether she's guilty or not. I don't think she's actually guilty of committing a crime if she was having an affair with someone who was not actually part of her her staff, well, part of her election staff, but not part of her congressional staff. I don't know if she necessarily broke the law. But the texts, the interactions, they, they do re reveal uh, a human being who fundamentally looks at other human beings as process, who thugs on others takes advantage of, a, of, of her particular... This is a very SJW thing, which is know your, your power relation to others. And where you have a power advantage, do what you can to assure that you're not taking advantage of the individual that's in a disenfranchised position. And she did that bigly, apparently, if these texts are true. Whether she committed a crime or not, she, she totally... She had a relationship with an individual in a situation in which the balance of power was significantly unequal between them and she had all the power and the staffer had none and she pretty much just, I won't say ruined this staffer's life, but may very well have ruined the staffer's career at, at the very least. It's it's a very uh, un-quote-unquote SJW thing to do. So she is like the conservative uh, who rails against homosexuals and yet he's doing gay sex and bathhouses this is her gay sex in a way uh, well not the sex part the sex part is not nearly as much of an issue as how she treated the individual around him now her answer here is this smear campaign will not get in the way of the work i am doing every day to move our district and our country forward Hill said in a public statement, I am truly grateful for the outpouring of support I have received from colleagues. And how the heck are people supporting her? I think whether she broke the law or not, she's a she's a crappy. I mean, by SJW standards, she's a she's a she's a Nazi. She she took a power advantage over a disenfranchised individual. She behaved like a Nazi. I mean, by SJW standards, allegations that I have been involved in a relationship with Mr. Kelly are absolutely false. Yeah. So, intimate pro photos. Now, this part: intimate photos of me and another individual were published by Republican operatives on an inter internet and without consent. I don't know that. If if these pictures, I didn't see any nudes, which if I did, I wouldn't have shared them with you here. But the pictures that I saw were not nudes. And if you didn't take the picture, and clearly you knew the picture was being taken, you can't really, you don't have a case. But she does make the uh, 
she does make this statement, and this is what you do. This 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 fits in with her whole hate men thing. This is this is how fascists think. So what she's trying to do is she's trying to appeal to that stochastic terrorism against men. The fact that I am going through a divorce from an abusive husband who seems determined to try to humiliate me. I am disgusted that my opponents would seek to exploit such a private matter for political gain. Are you disgusted? Are you really disgusted? Yeah. Welcome to America, honey. This is how the game is played. You fascists are participating in a winner-takes-all blood sport in which anything goes. The only thing that doesn't go is getting caught. That's it. Other than that, anything goes. So don't, I mean, I, you know, you'll do what you do. You'll, you'll play the victim here, but you're, you're part of this. You're part of the problem. You advance this type of activity, this type of behavior. You participated in the Kavanaugh hearing. You did that. You demonized a human being based on the flimsiest of uh, allegations for political gain. You participated in that. You all participated in that. You do that. I'm not defending Kavanaugh. I'm don't know anything about the realness of whatever happened there or not, but certainly the evidence presented was not evidence. It was not credible evidence at all. Her statement did not address the claim that Hill was romantically involved with her husband and the female staffer. I put that. That's Fox News. And I want to put the contrast here because I read a number of uh, sources on this. Politico, CNN, and in all of those, not a single one of them pointed that fact out. They just left that part out. Fox News, which is the token opposition, which they're still red fascists themselves. They have some blue fascists that they employ. But trust me, deep down, they serve the red fascists. They're the token opposition. But still, as token opposition, they're the only ones that included that little, that little, that little juicy part there. See, whether she broke the law or not, what she did was violate her own morality codes. And that is worth pointing out to her voters. This is a woman who proclaims to be a moral, upright citizen. Wow. And I'm not saying she's morally, like I'm not questioning the, the sexual decisions, whether she chooses to have relations in a threesome or what. But having relations with an individual who you have a significant power advantage over, especially a relationship with the type of dynamic that these folks had. It's a threesome. It's a, yeah. Yeah, you immediately put that staffer in a vulnerable position in, in a number of ways. One, the staffer immediately has to worry about whether they might be considered a liability by you because they know stuff that could be a political liability for you. And uh, the other thing is you can use your political advantage to, well, I guess, keep the party going. Oh, oh, would you like to have your job? This is this is why generally it's it's a frowned upon practice. So she violated the SJW standard of not using your power advantage to oppress others. She's a liar. She's a cheat. She's a she's a Nazi who acts like a Nazi in private life. Nazi as in fascist. Red fascist in this case. Nazis I would call black fascist, not obviously Black America, black fascists, as in that that would be their color. I I would identify black as the color of the, what you would think of as when we think of Nazi, we think of German Nazis. There are more than one Nazis though, uh, so they're the black fascists. We don't have many black fascists in America. Not many, very very few. They they exist, but they're not many. Mostly we're blue and red fascists, which are a little bit more indirect fascism than you'd get from the Nazis. And there's my little recommended list. I don't know why I put that up there, but uh, there you go. So there you go. The real story here is not whether she's guilty, not anything other than why. Why was she targeted? People went after her, made a concerted effort to go after this woman. The red State targeted her. And I'm willing to bet that the Justice Act Democrats and the uh, Justice and Development Party, no doubt, I'm sure they like it too, the Turks, I'm sure they love this. Because this enables them possibly to claim this seat. They want another militant red fascist to replace the, the soft red fascist. That, that's the real story here. I don't even care about her quote-unquote guilt or innocence. They're all guilty in my book. They can all be convicted of any number of uh, crimes, whether they're actual crimes written in law or whether they're crimes of any decent, decent human being would recognize as a crime that's legal, like insider trading, 
which is legal. You can insider trade at the government level if you're a representative. And your family can get wealthy off of it. It's legal. It's legal, but it's still a crime, and you know it. Have a good day.